This is a podcast where we discuss all aspects of personalities and human behavior. We are three professional counselors and your hosts. I'm Heather. I'm Amy. I'm Erin. Welcome to the Personality Pod. Hi, everyone. This is Heather. Um, So after we recorded this episode related to uh, the Zondi test, um, we really wanted to put a quick disclaimer up front. Um, This is a test that was uh, created in the 1930s, um, and it uses words, uh, uh, diagnostic words for mental illness. Um, So just real quick, this is for entertainment. Uh, We are not trained to diagnose ourselves or you. Um, And we're also not trying to make light of mental illness. We're not trying to make light of bipolar disorder or schizophrenia or or any other uh, mental illness at all. So, um, so listen to it with that in mind. Thank you. Hi guys. Hello. Hi. Jumping right in. Love it. How is everybody? Oh my goodness. Good. Good. My tailbone's healing. Hot dog. <laughs> Your tailbone's healing a hot dog. No, <laughs> let's let's tell that fun story of me running my neighborhood children back over to the neighbor's house in the pouring rain, mm-hmm. and I brilliantly decided to put on flip flops mm-hmm. and carry a four year old on my back and a backpack on the front of me. I looked like a little oompa loompa. I am mm-hmm. sure just <laughs> running through the neighborhood, and as I ran into their very slick garage, not paying attention, I ate it and just landed right on my buns. With the kid on your back. With the little girl on my back and the backpack, although I think it balanced me out. I think I fell directly on my tailbone oh. rather than on the front or the back. Um, and or a cheek. Or a che- one cheek. No, it was solid. Luckily, the four-year-old little girl was like, I'm fine, and then ran into the house. And both of the children ran into the house, and I am lying on the floor <laughs> like an invalid with a backpack on the front of me, like trying to catch my breath. <gasps> and then I rolled over and like sat on all fours for a minute, like, I'm not sure I can get up, but I'm going to have to. Let's see how this goes. So... I ran inside. Their dad was inside with another child. I was like, here's a backpack. There you go. And then I walked home carrying two umbrellas and my shoes because at that point, why wear them? And they went immediately into the trash. And then I came home and (laughs) took some Advil. I cried a little bit. No, I'm fine. But seriously, I am telling you, when you fall as an adult, nothing Mm -hmm. makes you feel older. (laughs) Right. Then when you fall and the next day when you wake up, you're just like, I think I've been hit by, like, hit I think I've been hit by a truck. Like a Mack truck literally ran right into my tailbone. The only thing that would have been worse is if that dad would have found you lying on found the ground. me lying, passed out on the ground. so embarrassing. With his child's backpack on me like a pregnant mother. Like, mm-hmm. seriously, it was <laughs> shameful. But I'm doing much better now. Good. So That is good. Yeah. We'll see how that goes, but yeah, that's been uh, healing from that shenanigans has been a, a lot of a lot of what my week has consisted of. Yay! What about you, Amy? What's going on for you this week? How's working part time? Well, not part time. How's working one, one last day? One last day. It's I, still one full time. Last day. I let go it's of Wednesdays. Still full time. <laughs> and I was so freaking busy on Wednesday that I came back to work on Thursday with the goal in mind of just to relax because I did so Mm -hmm. much on Wednesday. You need a deep breath after your day off. Good Lord. Uh, Heather, what's going on with you this week? Hmm. Oh my goodness. You know, all I do is run children from dance to, this was one of the best things that happened to me this week. Ooh. I drive kids from dance to soccer, blah, blah, blah. My four-year-old sits in the back seat. Sweet little baby. We have lots of conversations and I have to entertain him. So, at our work, there was a party, and and we had to guess how many Skittles were in this bottle. And nice. whoever guessed without going over would get it. It's like the Price is Right style. Right. Cool. And I wanted it so bad for poor little Joey, who's in the car all the time. Let's <laughs> pump it full of sugar. <laughs> well, I need to bribe that sweet boy. You do. That's, you I, I bribe, I talk, I sing. I mean, mm-hmm. anyways. You sing? Oh, Oh, nobody should ever hear it. He's probably like, please, please stop. <laughs> anyways, Why does she punish me? <laughs> anyways, so I said before we started, I need that bottle for JoJo. And I guessed 250 
And Ooh. guess how many Skittles were in that bottle? 249? 251. <gasps> <gasps> so it was just another confirmation that when you put things out into the world that you really want, you can get them. You can. I was so yeah. worried. I was the creator of that game. I was the one that put those Skittles in that bottle. And that so could have been part was, of it. Amy has magical powers. No, uh-huh. no, no, no. But I was worried that people would be like, man, is there a conspiracy going on here? Mm-hmm. Did Amy tell Heather how many? But no, I did not. It happened organically. She said, I want that for Joey. I was like, give it to Joey. <laughs> and then there it happened. That just, is so just awesome. Like, just like that. Magical. It is the power of the secret in action. I love that. <laughs> Overly I have not simplified. learned. I have not Overly learned that. You simplified. guys are much better. Amy, Amy has it down to a science. I do think I, I, I believe that when you put things out there that you really want, and I really wanted that you bottle. I really wanted that bottle. Of that sometimes it works. That's awesome. Sometimes it works. I think your heart has to be in the right place. That's right. I think you have to. Mm-hmm. Well, I say that your heart has to be in the right place, but I've had some evil voodoo wishes, you have. and they have come true as well. But I actually. I think it's I not think actual you have voodoo. to have it. It it can't be fear based. It has to be come from a place of openness and sincerity, even when it's evil, Amy. Amy, yeah, when it you true. truly, genuinely hates someone. <laughs> when you really want somebody to break a leg, and then they do, and they totally Ooh. do. Cut that. Not. <laughs> Hold on. Let's be clear. Amy did not break anyone's leg. I didn't break a leg. Oh, they're gonna think Just we're the mafia. A leg got <laughs> broken. On his own. After months of me wishing it to Wishing happen, so. it would happen. Anywho. It was good. <laughs> Power of the secret. <laughs> okay. So, you guys, I have one today that you guys don't know anything about. Nice. Ooh. I don't even know what these results are going to look like. I really, really hope so that this fun. is going to translate well through a podcast because there is a visual component to this. Okay. Let's give it a go. So, what this is called is the Zondi test. S-Z-O-N-D-I, Zondi. He was um, a psychiatrist, Leopold Zondi, and he was from Hungary, and he made this test in 1935. So he believed that it was possible to reveal our dark and repressed impulses Mm. simply by noticing how much of an aversion we had towards certain people. So he came up with this whole set of essentially cards with photos on them Uh oh! Mm. and you would look at the different photos and the ones that you were most adverse to revealed some dark impulse in your own personality oh i'm excited so all right let me just read you this little quick blurb um i'm going to show you eight different photos and i'm hoping that we can just use our best descriptive skills to explain to the audience what it is we're looking at and then of course we're going to have these posted on the website instagram Mm -hmm, twitter mm -hmm. so you can look at these so we'll put them in order yeah we'll put them in order if you want to go and pull that up at the same time you can actually see what we're talking about but we'll also explain it for you in case you're driving but um so each of the eight photos is supposed to reveal a hidden aspect of the human psyche Mm. and uh, Zandi believed that these latent impulses were repressed in childhood because they were deemed inappropriate, bad, or somehow socially unacceptable in the environment that we grew up in. Ooh. And he says that we are inherent, inherently attracted or repulsed by people who are similar to us. So I'm going to show you eight different photos, and you just have to decide which one you are most adverse to. And the way so we have to pick one out of the series that you're most one adverse that you're to. Most. So the instructions say, Ugh. look at the portraits of the eight people. Choose one person who you would not like to meet walking down a dark alley at night. Go with whatever person gives you the creeps, disturbs you, or generates fear or disgust within you. Who do I want to? Who do I want to run into in a dark alley? Is that night? another but, example? Is that another question? Because you said there is, it's just one question, correct? This is you are just you're going to see eight photos. Okay, you decide which one uh, evokes the strongest adverse reaction. In okay, you. either fear, disgust, gives you creeps, is disturbing to you. Yeah. This is the one person that more than any of the others. You would not want to run into in a dark alley if you were alone. Okay. Let's okay. see them. So, um, you said this comes from our childhood. Is that right? 
Well, there's a couple of psychological terms that they say are going to show up in these results. So uh, one word that they use, that Zandi used, is repression. Okay. And that's a psychological defense mechanism that prevents you from feeling certain emotions or impulses that you believe are wrong or bad or unacceptable. Yeah. And repression occurs when you push down a particular character trait, feeling, habit, or desire into your unconscious mind so that you're no longer consciously aware of it. Ooh. So there's certain parts of your personality that he says you've repressed. And the other term that he's going to be giving us is denial. And that's the practice of completely refusing to accept the reality of something within us, whether it's a habit, a trait, a feeling, a desire, an impulse. Mm. Denial can either be conscious or unconscious, meaning you're completely unaware of it. And in an attempt to further protect ourselves, we may adopt the opposite behavior of what we have repressed. No, I refuse to believe it. Uh, all right, well, that's not up for debate here, Pumpkin. Okay, let's I see the pictures. Denial. All right, now there's eight of them, and uh, let's do our best to describe we can them. Describe them, and try mm. not to try not to say necessarily well. Like you don't want like, to use words like say, creepy. Oh my God, that one's the most horrifying. That like, just, one's so just keep freaky. yours to your. Self, if okay. you can, maybe, right. and then we'll reveal what each one is most yeah. repulsive for us, or whatever okay. the word is. Okay, so here's number one, and these, uh, just so you know, these are these pictures are from the 1930s. These are black and white. They are very grainy. They're dark. It's just a headshot of every one of these characters, and the first one is a man who's thin. He's got uh, glasses. He's wearing spectacles. Little, uh, little round, like horn rimmed glasses. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, he's got a short, tight, dark hairdo. He's got pretty angular features, mm -hmm. like high cheekbones, uh, long pointy neck, nose. Uh, he's looking off to the side. He's not looking straight at the camera. Yep. Kind of a recessed chin a bit. Somebody want to describe number two? Number two is also a man. Uh, who is facing dead on, looking right at you. He has what I would define as a recessing hairline. Maybe? Yeah, it's like the recessing hairline. No, he has, he has a, a uh, widow's um, peak. Widow's peak. Yeah, there we he go. has a widow's peak. So it comes down in the front, and then on the sides it kind of, it, it is recessing on the sides, but the front of his hairdo is coming to a point. Yeah. He's he, got a rounder face. Yeah, he's definitely yeah. thicker than the first and guy, he, and he doesn't have much of a neck. Mm -hmm. He has thicker eyebrows, uh, uh, bigger features overall, I'd say. Yeah. He's a little smirky looking. Yeah. Uh, like he's got a bit of a, a like one smirk. eyebrows up a bit. It's not a smile, but he, he, he doesn't, he doesn't, yeah. he's not expressionless. He kind of looks like a football player. Ah, that's what I, I see say. That. Uh, here's number three. Now this photo is real dark. Um, another fellow who's looking straight on at the camera. He's smiling. He's yes, the first smiling. One smiling. He's long, got slender nose. A very long, slender nose. He's got eyes that are, are closer set together, but they're also sunken. So yeah. you see mostly shadow, shadow. as mm -hmm. opposed to his eyeballs. He looks yep. like he may have a mustache, but like you said, it's a grainy photo, so I can't quite tell. Mustache. I thought he did he might, when I saw he that. He might have a mustache. It looks like yeah. he might have a mustache. He looks a little older too, but than the, I, than the first. Year. Yeah. We got our first woman. Mm -hmm. That's a woman. That's a woman. Woo! I'm. I mean, oh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> she has her hand to her head. She does have her hand up, uh, up next to, to the side of her head, like you would if you had a a headache, maybe, or if yeah. you were if like you, you were trying to rest your head against your hand, but there's no tilt. No, yeah. she, she's looking straight on at the camera again. Yep. She's mm -hmm. almost got her chin kind of down, Tucked down so that her, but she's looking up. So she's looking straight ahead, but it appears that her face is tilted down. So her eyes are looking upward. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She's yeah. right at the camera. Petite face. She's got a frown though. Her, her yeah, mouth is definitely frowning. curving down. Yeah. Uh, looks like, I can't tell. Do you think maybe she has like longer hair that's maybe Yes. Pulled behind her. Bunned up. Yeah. Maybe in a bun that we can't see. Yep. Looks yeah. like she's wearing some sort of top that's got a high neck. Yeah. You can't yeah. see her neck, but you can clearly see that she has one. She has a neck? She has. Well, the, the one guy, the, the football well, player, doesn't look like he's got a neck. Yeah. He looks like he's too heavy to have a neck. This lady does have a neck. She has she's a neck, got a neck but, but it's got hidden. a high, 
a high collar on, probably the the, the dress of the day. She's got some bags Ooh. under her eyes. That's what um, I was thinking. She looks tired. She looks older to me. Not like a grandmother, but mm -mm. definitely tired mom. Worn. Tired and worn. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Number five is another woman. I, uh, yeah. Okay. Does she have something in her hair or is it just like she has a more elaborate hairdo? I can't she quite tell. She might have like a little bonnet on her head. Yeah. Again, folks, these are black and white photos and they don't have a ton of detail. It's kind of hard to make out. Y'all are going to be able to see. Like you're, you're like, is that her hair or a hat? Right. Not sure. I don't know. It could be for a hat. It's a little fluffy on the top. Um, Long, lean face. Mm -hmm. Looking straight ahead again. She's, she's not smiling or frowning. Here's number six. Is that, that's a man, right? That's a man. Roundish head. Real sunken eyes again. That, that dark sunken, shadow. Very dark eyes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Looks like a side part. Also but, not uh, smiling. A big not smiling. forehead. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a five head. It is definitely a five head. A little round nose though. Look at the little mm -hmm. round nose. There's no like angular mm -hmm. lines on that. No. This guy is wearing some sort of black outfit. That looks like a turtleneck. That looks like it's going straight up to his chin. Yeah. It almost reminds me of like a monk. Absolutely. I was going to say that, but he doesn't have the, like, you know, the white part in the collar. Right. If he had that, I'd say he looked, he has a priest or a monk or a religious outfit cloak on. Okay. All right. And then we have number seven. Looks like the oldest out of everybody we've mm -hmm. seen, don't you think? Yeah. He has got a round... Head. He has and got a big round head. Big, full beard. Big beard, big round head. You can't really, because of the shadowing, you can't see his mouth, but I'm envisioning a smile. He kind of does look like he's smiling a bit. He has a little bit of a smile, a smile and it might be those cheeks or kind yeah. of Maybe even his eyes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that there's a slant to his like eyes. He's smiling. Yeah. He's got a bit of a rumpled forehead. He does. Lots of rumples going on his forehead for some reason. Rumples. He's got a real, he really has a cropped hair, dude. Looks like mm -hmm. he's got a, little, a buzz cut. Um, or losing his hair, perhaps. Perhaps. I think he's losing his hair and he's got a buzz cut. Yes. And he also does not have a neck. And he looks like maybe he's wearing a suit. Yeah. yeah. And like he's got the 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 dress shirt open, maybe. Yes, it could be shadow too. I, I know. Yeah. And his beard might to... his beard might hide his neck too. So yeah. I hate to be unfair to him. And then we have number eight, who All looks right. like the youngest. Looks like the youngest to me too. Boy, that looks like a pretty man. It's a very feminine kind of guy. That's, yeah, yeah. There's features. Uh, um, but he looks real young. Like I, I'd say sixteen ish. 17 maybe he looks very young he has a full head of hair yep full head of hair but nicely cut thin face his full eyes lips. are the most open and unshadowed right he also looks like his he's not wearing lipstick but you can tell his lips have color mm -hmm. very pigmented yes. with color and that's our last one all okay. right so so look over your pictures again a, if you're looking at them yeah and really think about how you would feel if you had to, well, if you're approaching somebody in a dark alley, which one is just on your list as the one you absolutely do not want to meet? Are you guys ready? I'm ready. Mine's stuck. Are you ready, Amy? Because you were holding them up. Yes. You're able to I see had them. to look at all these suckers when I was printing them out. So I've seen them and I've looked at them closely. Any bad dreams? Uh, no. Good. <laughs> I want to tell you that, again, this was from the 1930s. And the... The word that he gives for each one of these to describe what kind of personality you have or what thing you're repressing in your own personality are not necessarily words that we use today. And this does not indicate that you have some sort of a personality disorder or a mental illness. Uh, this is just a describer. And, and I'll go into the details about what this means. But um, Aaron, do you want to tell me what one you chose? Yeah, number two. Okay. Round man looking right at you with this unusual, it's not a smile. It's a smirk in my mind. Like that's my definition of it is he, there, he went, I feel like his eyes are looking right at me, which is very uncomfortable to me. Like almost like he's trying to intimidate me with so those eyes. Just to remind you, he's the one that we described as almost looking like a football player, football player. thick, 
uh, thick neck that his head kind of goes straight to his shoulders. He's got that widow's peak, but then also the sides are, re are um, recessed. And Heather even used the term that if one eyebrow almost looks raised, I mm -hmm. feel like it is. Mm -hmm. There is something about that stare yeah. and like the angle of his head looking. I just, it makes me uncomfortable. I don't even like to look at him. Okay. And <laughs> Heather, which one did you choose? Well, I kind of feel torn. Um, so I don't know if for the purposes of ours, I should choose something different than Aaron because I, I felt... Um, if you're, if you just want to say the one that scared me the most, I would say number four. But when you talk about meeting somebody in a dark alley, I would automatically eliminate the women and say number two. Okay. So the That's one that's, about... that was the most, like had, I had the most adverse reaction to was four. All right. Okay. And that is the question that it's, that it's asking is, is which one do you have the most, uh, adverse reaction to. So that is the purpose of this test. Okay. So number four is the one that is a woman with her hand up to the side of her head. Her head is slightly tilted down so we that she's about like her having... looking up at the camera. She has bags under her eyes. Bags under her eyes wearing a very high neck. Yeah, she has she... a very severe look. That's a good way she to describe does have that. a severe look. What's and yours, Amy? I chose number six. Which Let's see. Also... Which one is that? Oh, six is the okay. one that almost looks like it might be like in a monk or a pri priest outfit minus the little white collar in the middle. Um, Again, sunken eyes. It's the eyes that really bothered me. The eyes look very sunken, very dark. They It, it feels dead. If you <laughs> like blur your vision, stare. if you blur your vision, it looks like a skeleton. Ooh. Well, it, it's just the eyes. Something about those eyes look dead to me. Like, this is the kind of person that would inflict pain and not even flinch. I don't know why. That's he just looks what I like imagined. he belongs in the movie Coco, like without the bright colors. Seriously, he looks like a skeleton. I don't All like right. that guy either. So, what are so, our, okay. what are our so, things? Uh, let's, let's do our results real quick, and yeah. then I'm going to tell you yep. everybody else. I think so, that sounds good. <laughs> number two, Aaron. Yours yeah. was the first in order. Okay. So, the name of this is the epileptic. But epilepsy is a neurological disorder. However, in this case, epilepsy refers to the seizures we may experience from repressed emotions that build up and then explode. Oh. If this gentleman caused you to feel disgust or fear, you are likely repressing emotions such as rage, aggression, irritability, and impulsiveness. The reason mm. why you may have repressed these emotions is that in early childhood, you learned that such emotions were not okay. And in order to protect Isn't that yourself, what every girl learns? That's exactly what we all learn, I guess. But I'm sorry, Amy. I don't know. I feel like girls, that's an unfortunate lesson we teach girls is being angry and is unacceptable. Rage. Ooh. Mm -hmm. So for, for the denial portion of this result interpretation, uh, it says to protect yourself from experiencing strong emotions like anger, you may have developed a strong emotional facade. You're likely a kind and peaceful person who has a friendly disposition and can easily be relied upon by others. However, your self-control has the potential of dissolving under stress, causing you to lash out and explode. You've built up a strong wall of sarcasm. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you have. A little think, bit. What do you think about that, Erin? I think that sounds about right. <laughs> So let's Although I don't feel <laughs> rageful, I just do it to distract well, that's right, attention. Because you've repressed it. I have. That's true. I, I keep forgetting that part of it. Okay, fair enough. All right. So Heather, you chose number four, which is the schizophrenic. <laughs> Ooh. Oh dear. <laughs> if the impassive and vacant gaze of this woman gave you the creeps, you might be <laughs> repressing apathy towards other people and a sense of internal isolation towards life. Oh, this type is also characterized by thought distortions, mental confusion, and a general inability to relate to yourself and others. That's very. You sound like you abstract. need therapy. I don't yeah. know. That one's hard. Okay. So it says your denial is that you're likely a sociable person who enjoys communicating with others and spending time with your close friends. However, your friendliness may be a mask for the sense of inner loneliness you feel, even around your closest friends. Your relationships might also lack depth and substance due to your disconnection from your inner self. Hmm. I'm sorry for our shallow relationship. <laughs> <laughs> 
That's wow. Ooh. Mm. What do you think? Does the any of that ring true? Well, I I think that you know what? I think that over the years I have been able to let go of relationships and people and that I've wondered why I didn't necessarily care. Mm -hmm. Um, And I have felt lonely uh, or that like isolation, even when I'm around people. And I do sometimes think that my sociability is fake. (laughs) Oh, I know. I think we get the real part of you. You do. Yay. It's very narrow, (laughs) narrow. uh, We've got the small, yeah, we're in that small group. A group of. Two. A two. group of two. <laughs> but we'll those are, of those one. are hard things to be real frank about. Oh, and I, I think about over the years, like, I feel like I can think about some important relationships I had earlier in my life that I just sort of, let just sort of, I don't know, go. All right. Let's All right. move on. Let's move on. What's Amy? What's your diagnosis? Six. I got <laughs> depressive. <laughs> oh, God. Um, These are all very flattering, by the way. If yeah, I, this is hey, this is your dark side. This I is know. not supposed yep. to be like, oh, it's so lighthearted and I love cute. This. It's supposed to be your dark side. You're There's nothing good about this. this. This is the stuff that you bury deep. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so if it says, if the heavy and melancholic face of this man scared you the most, you might be repressing feelings of self-loathing, guilt, pessimism, and worthlessness. All of these feelings are associated with depression. And for denial, it says, on the surface, you may appear to be happy, outgoing, a friendly person who enjoys helping others. But beneath the surface, you might feel lonely, unhappy, and mistrustful. You might also struggle with low self-esteem, which you avoid by focusing externally on your work. (gasps) Amy, do you need a hug? (laughs) I don't know. I feel like this is... This does feel accurate if I'm being totally honest. I mean, mm-hmm. I, I have known my whole life that I, I've had a low self-esteem and keep myself very busy and moving and, and focusing on others, trying to be happy, outgoing, optimistic, things of that nature. So um, do I have self-loathing? And that's ex- that's, I mean, that's extreme. Pretty ex- yeah, that's yeah. pretty extreme. So It's pretty extreme. I don't know about that, but let's talk about some other results because there's a whole bunch of them that y'all might have scored. So yeah. what if you chose number one? Who the guy was, who's not lo- the only one who's not really looking. Who was not looking. Yeah. Uh, and he had that real uh, skinny face and angular cheekbones. And glasses. Where are these mm-hmm. colors? Get out here. Front and center, boys. Where'd you go? All right. Here he we turned go. him upside okay. down. So number one had the little horn rimmed glasses on too. All right. This one is the sadist. Ooh. You have likely repressed the need to dominate others as a result of struggling with author, 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 mm-hmm. uh, so, so. authoritative, authoritarian, take that, take that cotton ball out of your authoritarian. mouth, authoritarian, got it, in your early life, thank you, Heather, <laughs> deep inside you may harbor repressed desires to see others either socially, emotionally, sexually, or physically suffer, serial killers, this, but now, this wait a minute, because has... if somebody just got number win, we do oh, not sorry. want to indicate that you're a sorry. serial killer. Take that out. Cut We're it. not diagnosing you, but you do sound like a sociopath. <laughs> this is the repressed part of you. This does not mean that you want to do That's right. Things. That's right. Of course. Um, and we can always sublimate those into appropriate <laughs> desires. Right. You can like be, be a butcher. Surgeons. Or a, a waxer. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. You mean like a body yes, waxer? Yes, yeah. yeah. Inflict Gallop pain. Not yeah. like somebody who's out there waxing a car. Inflict no. pain on others yeah. by waxing them. Oh, goodness. Dentists? Yeah. Oh. Yes, exactly. Yeah. I, I apologize. Yes. You are not a serial killer. You're Everybody a dentist. who chose number one. No. <laughs> you but, might be, but you're probably not. You're because probably Because you've not. repressed it. But you probably had a parent that was rough. Possibly. Or someone. Probably a parent, probably a mother. It did make me very uncomfortable that that dude wasn't looking at the camera. But I was able to look past it because the one that was staring directly into my soul bothered me more. <laughs> I liked that he wasn't looking okay. at the camera. That made it less scary. I agree. Okay. Um, but okay. If you, All right. Your denial, if you're a sadist, uh, you're likely a peaceful and completely harmless person who likes to help others. 
However, it's totally different than what I said. Yes. Exactly. In order to prevent others from asserting their authority over you, you may be passive aggressive as a way of indirectly defying and punishing others. Go to therapy for that. That's right. <laughs> it can be fixed. Now, what if you chose number three? What did three look like, Aaron? Remind me. Three is the gentleman that we were saying actually looked like he was smiling and yeah. had a mustache, a okay. uh, long face, and um, I, he was my favorite. I like him. Let's Heather have him over for dinner. Three. So he's the catatonic. It says, this unshaven and smiling gentleman embodies the face of mental hyperactivity, of living solely within the mind and losing touch with reality, disconnection with the body and other people, as well as being oblivious to the emotional and physical needs of oneself and others is a major type of, uh, a major sign of this type. And a person with this personality, uh, in denial, they attempt to avoid losing touch with reality in an attempt to avoid losing touch with reality, a dutiful, inhibited, and rule-driven personality may develop. You are likely a highly intelligent person who dislikes change and prefers everything to be concrete. That's the catatonic. Wow. Number five is the Number woman who, who we looks- couldn't decide if was wearing a hat or just had goofy hair. Mm-hmm. With a long, lean face that seriously reminds me of the Wicked Witch of the West. Yeah, that's a good descriptor. Descriptor. I didn't want to say that. Descriptor. Stripper. <laughs> Anyways, Describe no, I, I didn't want to say that up front because I didn't, you know, it sounds mean. And But yeah. seriously, that's what she reminds me of. So five is the hysteric. If the heavy-lidded gaze of this woman disturbed you the most, you might be repressing exhibitionist or attention-seeking tendencies. Ooh, stripper does count. <laughs> <laughs> This type is characterized by intense displays of shallow and unstable emotions, narcissistic tendencies, and the thirst for approval. In your denial, you may have an outwardly modest and reserved personality, but inwardly, you're secretly attracted to charming others and being in the spotlight. You are the type of person who values attention to detail, as can be seen in how much effort you put into your physical appearance, such as lavish clothing, shoes, and jewelry. Ooh, maybe it is a fancy S- hat. Stripper it is. Stripper it is. A fancy <laughs> hat. Number seven was the guy with the big old round head. I kind of like liked him, too. Seven reminds me of Santa Claus, just not with a white facial yeah. hair. But right. he did have that it feel to be. me. Yeah, he's a round, jolly-looking fellow. Jolly is a good word. Mm-hmm. He's a maniac. <laughs> um, <laughs> And so are you, if you chose number seven, apparently. (laughs) You have likely repressed hyperactivity, symptoms of obsessiveness, and uncontrolled extroversion within you. Hmm. Mania is characterized by an excess of emotion and results in compulsive habits, uncontrolled impulses, fixations, and wild, raving energy levels. Raving? I don't have no manic in me. (laughs) (laughs) We think he's jolly. Me neither. (laughs) Uh, Denial. So on the surface of your personality, you're logical, controlled, you're restrained, you value balance, and seem to dislike chaos or excess in any form. Um, That includes your emotions, your beliefs, noises, the environment. But beneath, you may be resisting the overabundance of energy within which you worry might make you lose control. Oh, Ooh. embrace it. <laughs> Maybe I do have a maniac because I am logical and controlled and restrained. That's it. That's I the that's the maniac part of you. <laughs> there it is. All right. Number eight was, number eight the, was our youthful fella. He's the one that I was least afraid of. I felt like we could sit down and have a nice chat about eyeliner. <laughs> he's feminine there he does is a not feminine... look threatening to me no. he does not look threatening that he is for sure young, friendly like he'd be helpful uh, yes so if you chose number eight as the scariest you are dissociative identity disorder Ooh, multiple personalities uh-huh so if the soft youthful face of this man repulsed you you might be repressing fear surrounding your sexuality or your gender identity. Mm. There we go. As a child, you may have been bullied, defamed, or traumatized by a parent, a teacher, or a family member in a way that made you question your right to be accepted by members of the opposite sex. Oh, well, I did say he was pretty. He is pretty. He is. So for denial, you are a person who likes to emphasize your gender, gender role by being excessively masculine or excessively feminine. For instance, if you're a male, you might be overly macho 
And if you are a female, you might like asserting your femininity by being flirty, sexy, or unnecessarily submissive. Ew. Yeah, Those are know. like the soccer moms that show up in the low-cut shirts. Mm. Oh. But we're not judging you. No, we're, we're, just, you. we're just, you clearly oh. have a multiple personality issue. <laughs> no, uh, Aaron, no. I know. we are I'm... not diagnosing people as having a mental illness. We are just talking about, these are the words that Zandi came up with to it's describe true. the piece of you that is being repressed. Mm -hmm. That's all. It's just your little dark side. You're very much yes. dark side. So there's some tips on these about what are you supposed to do about any of this? And <laughs> well, I, I'd like to hear them. So, I do like to hear it. There's tough, they talk to you about journaling and catharsis and art therapy. So journaling, of course, just writing down um, anything about your thoughts, your wishes, your desires. It's where you can be unfiltered. You and unfiltered. You can be as expressive as you want to be. And his, here is where you do not repress anything. You let it all hang out in your journal. Put a lock on it. Stick it under your mattress. <laughs> um, catharsis is where you're going to let out any of these repressed emotions. Um, what does it say here? You know, these days for journaling, you could put notes in your phone and put a lock on that. You can't put a lock on that. You could. Just don't put it into the cloud. Do you find it is as effective to type words like that? Not as for me, but writing? I think we're of a certain generation. And so I think that uh, the people who are below us will probably find that to be I effective. have to write stuff. I do too, but I think we didn't grow up with a phone in our hands, texting. <laughs> it's true, but they even talk about like that. For example, even when I do research and things like that, I write it because it helps me remember. It helps. There's, there's another connection with that that I have if I, if I write. Well, and I've talked about journaling with clients, how you have these thoughts that are going on in your head and they're looping around and they're just Mm -hmm. swirling and swirling and when you do the act of writing and you you put pen to paper you're giving those thoughts an outlet you're you're getting them out of your head first of all but also when you are writing you're involving very specific parts of your brain that otherwise aren't involved yeah like when you're it, typing it's not the same I, mm -hmm. I don't think it's the same when you're putting when you're writing words it, it involves that other side of your brain that might not otherwise be involved with thinking and analyzing or feelings and stuff like that. So mm -hmm. I, I do think there's something powerful in grabbing a notebook and a, a pen and writing thoughts the old fashioned way. Mm -hmm. I also think if you've ever had the opportunity to even look at your own journal, clearly don't snoop into somebody else's, but you can tell an emotion by the writing. You can see when something is written carefully and with intent versus mm -hmm. scribbling or frustration or I need to get this out. You can see that. You can't see that when yeah. you type. I agree with both of you, but I also think that if somebody's unwilling to write, it's better to get it out. So. Absolutely. Yeah. And there's, there's no right or wrong way to do it. Mm -mm. I mean, if you want to do it on your phone and you want to type with your thumbs, go for it. If you want to mm -hmm. sit at a desktop and, and type on a keyboard, if you want to Right. If you want to, if you want to write some words down and you don't, there's no place for you to put it safely. You, you don't trust anybody in your life, then write it and burn it, write burn it sucker. and tear it into a million pieces, stick it in the shredder, uh, whatever you need to do to but get it out, that. but get it out is the main thing. Yep. Or continue repressing it so that you can pay therapists. That's right. <laughs> yeah. You can do that too. You can do that too. Cause these are the extremes. Of course <laughs> they are the extremes. A lot of these these people were, I mean, this is talking about everybody on the entire planet is repressing something mm -hmm. and you can be a fully functioning, very healthy adult and still have some things that don't come up to the surface for you. And that's okay. And I'm in a sidebar here. So many people are doing these, you know, backgrounds on their genealogy and stuff like that. You could find that one of these pictures was your great, great uncle and Wouldn't really great. Yeah. <gasps> go back and be like, man, number seven just so happened to be my great, great, great uncle, and there is something about that dude that just rubs me the wrong <laughs> way. <laughs> I wonder who these people were. I, I wonder know. how Their Zandi photos. chose yeah. these people. Yes. Like, why these people mm -hmm. specifically? And how did he know that that was going to bring up an adverse reaction? I wonder if they were patients. Well, and I wonder, like, did he tell these people, I don't want you to smile, I want your head resting on your hand type thing, or were these just like, oh, no, pick that picture. Or that, that woman that, that frightened one. me really was a schizophrenic patient. Maybe. 
Mm-hmm. Or they found these old family photos and they were just like, oh, make mm-hmm. make great Aunt Gracie number four. She's always weirded me out. <laughs> Maybe. You know? But don't you find it fascinating? I mean, just if you put these pictures aside, we hear that all the time that you do have an adverse reaction oh, yeah. to other people because they have a characteristic about them that you don't like in yourself. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Which I find the mirror. so fascinating. It is so fascinating. Yeah. Oh, it's uncomfortable. But I'm just when, thinking about it. Oh, it's odd, though, because when you realize it, all of a sudden you're like, there is just something about this person. We call chalkboard people where, or um, uh, uh, sandpaper people. They just rub you the wrong way. Mm. There is something about them you can't necessarily say it. And it's amazing because when you talk with other people, they don't have that same reaction at all. Yeah. Oh, I think they're so endearing. Why don't you like them? I don't know. I or what about like the them. people that you don't really know very well, but you feel like a strong attraction to them? Uh-huh. I think that's fascinating, too. Why? Why? I, I um, looking at those photos, made me think about, um, I always like men with facial hair. Mm-hmm. Oh. And my mom, so my dad died when I was two. Um, and my mom, my dad had full beard, mustache. Um, and he my was grizzly? He was grizzly. I never pictured that. I don't um, know why. And my mom said that when I was a little girl, under five, that I was always attracted to men like that, that oh. I would try to talk to them and stuff. And she felt like it was because of that. Oh. And that's still, that is still true. Looking at those photos right now, I, like all the men that had facial hair, none of them were real frightening to me. Huh. Heather. What? Do you love Santa Claus? I love Santa. <laughs> now I don't know if my mom is right, but it's a fascinating theory. Like, why Why are you attracted to certain people right. for no reason at all? That is interesting. Mm-hmm. Right. Oh, wow. Okay. Well, hey, we were talking about what you can do about this. The other thing oh, yeah. is catharsis, and I just wanted to explain what that is really quickly. That's um, any outlet or way that you can uh, physically work kind it of out. get rid of your emotions. So that could be having a really heavy cry. Mm-hmm. That could be um, going for a run. That could be laughing hysterically. That could be screaming. Um, dancing. Dancing. Yeah. Vent, venting, talking it out. Talking ah, and talking. And talking. For sure. Uh, Aaron and I went to Costa Rica this year for a yoga retreat, and it was amazing. And there was a yoga teacher there that was actually part of our, our group. She was not the leader. And she does something called a journey dance and it's usually Mm. held outside by a bonfire and there's like drums beating and the the participants all like have scarves and she leads it but i pictured it being very tribal i did too yeah i can't really imagine it because she didn't go into a ton of detail but she takes you through your life journey and by the end you're supposed to be like releasing everything and it's like real primal and i think there's like crying and maybe i was gonna say yelling and some all sorts of real powerful emotions i was so excited i wanted to say lead us through a journey dance but that she was not the teacher she was a participant like i said there was our our time there was very purposely planned and thought through. So there wasn't really an opportunity to, for us to go build a bonfire and do this journey dance, but Oh man, does that sound amazing? I think it does sound amazing, but we, she talked about like in the end there is, there's these big emotions and people are screaming. And I just pictured myself laying in a ball on the ground and like (laughs) sobbing hysterically. And I was like, you know, I'm just not here for that. Thank you so much. That sounds Amazing. Like, I wouldn't do that. I don't care if I end up crying. I don't care if I end up praising and singing hallelujah and ripping my clothes off. I just want to see what would come up. I just want to see. A lot of people would pay to see this. I think this oh, is going to be the next right. Vegas show. No, so it would track. have to be in the jungle with nobody around where you knew you were in complete isolation safe. and private safe. and safe. Costa Rica Absolutely. really would have been the perfect place. For it would have been the perfect place. Like yeah. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Um, okay, so they, they also say some other things you can do is shadow work. What's Ooh, that? What, what is, is shadow work? Let's see what that is. That makes me think of that book, uh, the the light side of the dark chasers or dark side of the light chaser. Oh Lord, getting might be getting it backwards. Stephen, look that up. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what that is. <laughs> it's it is about our dark side. 
So okay. anyways. Well, it's, it's where it says, Zondi says, it's where you explore your unconscious mind and your your shadow work is only beneficial when we approach it with self-loving mindset and an open heart. So avoid this if you're still struggling with self-loathing tendencies. I, I don't know. We'll have to read more about I, what is yeah, shadow work. Yeah, I want to know what shadow work is. And to then, be continued, shadow work. They're not up. all the same because some of them don't right. have shadow work on there. One of them also says make regular time to connect to your inner self or your soul through prayer, poetry, acts of service, introspection, meditation, and other spiritual practices. That sounds oh. lovely. I think that's good all around. I, think I don't so care too. what you picked. That's a good idea. I don't have that on mine. On mine, one that does not show up on any other Ooh. is nature therapy. Mm. regularly get out in nature, go for a daily walk, sit near a stream, take your dog to the park, or simply sit outside in your backyard appreciating the trees and the birds. I is do that your Maybe yes. this is your groundhog. Ecotherapy is a powerful way of helping you to feel connected to the world around you. I do that all the time. That is why I'm not depressed. Because what does, of what does of time. nature therapy? What does mine specifically say? Hold on. I didn't know they were all different. They, I didn't realize they were either. All the same. They're almost oh, all the okay. same. There's but only some like of them. Two mine did have. not have. No wait. Heather's was number four. Yours did not have shadow work oh, on there. Well, that was the thing that was so fascinating. Well, you don't have to worry about it. It because doesn't matter. Really <laughs> you don't. Have and that. um, then we have keep working being... on gaining self worth, which is another one, and then art therapy. Yep, draw, paint, scrapbook, or otherwise artistically express yeah. your emotions. Well, I hate art. <laughs> well, maybe you need to <laughs> tap into it. So you can get that creative. I like, I appreciate others' arts very much. And you know, it is interesting because the last time I was at my mom's, she always has lots of art projects out. And she was having my kids do stuff. And I normally don't do anything for myself. I do lots of stuff for myself, but in this art project setting, I normally do not get engaged in a project of my own. Gotcha. Um, but the last time I was there, I was like, you kids are on your own. Good luck with that 1600 glue. <laughs> um, 1600 glue. What's it's, that? it's a special kind of glue and it is extremely potent. Like, um, Very we were sticky. making, yes, we were making yard art and it sticks ceramic to ceramic. Okay. So uh, it's very, very strong. It's like those little teacup baths and bird feeders that right. they make. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. That's what my kids did. Yeah. Well, I uh, they're old enough now. They're 10 and 12, so that I kind of let them deal with that on their own and hoped they didn't glue their fingers to the ceramics. Or um, each other. Or each other, whatever. <laughs> and I did my own project, and I love it so much, and I got so engaged in it. And... Wow. Um, I didn't really care. I don't normally think I'm very creative. So I, but I decided I didn't really care if anyone else liked it. It was totally for me. That's Bingo. Right. And I put it in my room. That's right. And I, it's, it's beautiful to me. It's lovely. That's I'll, awesome. I'll tweet a picture of it. And if you Thank don't like you. it, you keep God. your own comments to yourself. <laughs> yeah. You keep your comments to yourself. <laughs> you know, don't Brene Brown rain on. talks about this so much because she says we are all creative people. We are, we are on this earth to create something. And it's, it's, it's knocked out of us for so many people when you're little, because it's taught as a subject and there's grades and there's comparison. And yeah. I don't know, you are a creative being and I, I hope you can do more of that stuff. I yes, think we should it, do some creative projects. It felt projects. so, Ooh. it felt so good. It was, it just, it was so fun. Do we all have art therapy on ours? My, the epileptic mine is no art therapy. I clearly don't need it because I just create all the time. And all right. do. So it's not you know, therapeutic we, to we me We are going to have an art project. We're going to create mm -hmm. something. Love it. That will be my catharsis. It's still an action. It's an activity. It yeah. And I have catharsis on mine. So I will gonna, participate. You're going to put all your rage into it. There we go. Ooh. Red paint. Yeah, we're going to make a red <laughs> rage project. Heather's face right now. Heather's like, I know what red. <laughs> I don't like this at all. <laughs> oh. All right. Well, everybody, that is the Zondi personality test. So if really you have to see the pictures to really get a mm -hmm. sense of which one gives you the heebie-jeebies and then see which one of these is, is uh, your repressed emotion. And then let's make some artwork together. Share us all, share with us all your projects that you make. Yeah. yeah. Share your That's fun. Journal entries. Be nice, so everyone. Dare. Yes. Yeah. And be, be kind because this is, this is inner work. And it mm -hmm. makes us all a little bit vulnerable, but we all That's have right. one of these. We're all repressing something, so don't think you're better than us. That's right. <laughs>
We're all <laughs> get off your high horse we're right all a now. Jacked up on the inside. We all got a little denial. We all got some repression. Let's mm-hmm. let it out. Let's let our freak flags fly. fly. <laughs> Love it. All right. Have we right. have we done enough? I think so. I think we're good. Okay. Till next time. Goodbye. Later. Bye. Bye.